Okay, so we are smack dab in the middle of this year's iCast. And I believe all the secret new stuff has officially been unveiled and released. So that means we're going to go over to the Tackle Warehouse webpage. And we're going to go over all the Tackle that I found interesting. But I do want to say that I don't think Tackle Warehouse has every single thing that was released. I know that they're coming out with a new Revo line of bait casters. I don't see them on here. And I don't see them on Abu Garcia's website, so that might warrant a different video. But I'm going to consolidate everything into one video this year. Because, to be honest, this year compared to years before, it was kind of underwhelming. But that doesn't mean there wasn't some cool stuff released. So let us begin. Now, obviously, we're going to start with the casting reels. And 13 Fishing came out with a slew of new reels. Now this Inception G2, I guess it turns out that uh, pro angler Gerald Swindle has signed on with 13 Fishing and he's got a reel that apparently he helped design. Now it looks to be typical 13 Fishing, they're using the same frame, giving it uh, different color schemes, using the same brakes. But uh, yeah. This was probably the coolest looking out of all of them. And then you got this reel right here, the Modus SZ2, which I believe is going to be replacing that lime green reel, which I forget the name of, that had the uh, CZB bushings instead of spool bearings. But it looks pretty cool, at least in these computer generated images. Kind of got that flat gray color, but then you got this uh, purplish blue as far as the color accents go and it's gonna come with these somewhat see-through knobs that have uh, purple cores but yeah these are computer generated images they're not the real deal so I have to see what one looks like in a real picture before I pass judgment on the looks but if I'm not mistaken yeah, it's using the CZB spool bushings. They call them bearings here, but they're bushings. All right, so Daiwa came out with the uh, Daiwa Coastal 80, which is basically the Tatula 80 with some upgrades to make it saltwater friendly. You're gonna get a hundred millimeter handle, aluminum frame, and side plates. So I don't think that's gonna be the palm side plate, but I could be wrong. But the handle side plate will be aluminum. It's got a super deep spool, as you can see, real deep. And of course, it's sporting this blue color. So this is, I guess, a more compact version of the. Coastal TW and it costs the same amount of money $250 yeah here's the regular Coastal which is based off of the Tatula 100 frame now I was hoping they would release a Tatula Air to compete with Shimano's Corrado BFS but uh, I guess that's not in the works at least for now alright let's check this out do you recognize this reel right here the Cast King Kestrel Elite Bait Finesse. Apparently it is being released in America. And for those of you who went to Cast King's website to check it out after my video and it was gone, apparently I guess somebody on their uh, web tech team put that page up early, but it is back up there if you guys want to check it out. But we're not going to go too much into the Kestrel Elite. And that's because I have one now. It arrived today and I'll be doing an unboxing video and that should be out probably Sunday or Monday. Now the deadbolt is not new but I did get more information on this reel. As you can see it doesn't have a drag star because I believe this reel is set with the drag tightened all the way down already and this is for you know of course heavy duty techniques. So that's interesting. Now one reel that I don't see is the pitching and skipping reel, which was basically the speed demon with a really, really shallow spool, just like the one in the the loose, uh, was it Pro SP? And in fact, it looked pretty much like the exact same spool. It's got that groove down the center to lay your line down in the hole where your knot was. And maybe I can pull it up. 
All right, so we're on Cast King's website. And let's see here. Yep, the Kestrel is back on their website. Here it is, the Speed Demon Elite Skipping Reel. So I wonder why they didn't put that on Tackle Warehouse's webpage. But as you can see, it's basically just a shallow spool. So that means when you skip and have an overrun or a blow up, it doesn't go that deep into the spool, but there you go. Okay, so let's go to Luz, because Luz came out with two new top of the line bait casters, and they are putting these reels in price categories never before seen in a Luz reel. So the first one is going to be the Luz Elite TI SLP, which I think I showed you guys a little preview of it before, but of course, if you watched my uh, Doyo, what, what is it, the Koba Elite video, you'll know what reel this is. Rebadged as a lose, but look at it. This thing looks sick, at least in these pictures. Now, this is going to be pretty much the Koba Elite down to its Paramag brake system. Where is it at? Yep, new Paramag braking system, recessed external brake dial design. But of course they're going with the Luz wind grips, which I prefer over the ones in the Doyo uh, Koba. So a sick looking reel from Luz, but check out that price, $499. So they've pretty much leapfrog over the Metanium, the Zillion, and they're getting into Steez territory. I think the Steez A is $499. And I believe the Metanium DC is $499. So they are trying to challenge some really big dogs with this new Luz Elite TI SLP. Now, will anyone pay $500 for a Luz? Well, that remains to be seen. All right, so the next Luz is going to be the Pro TI SLP. And it's basically the same reel, but I think. It's got the centrifugal brakes, which I prefer even over the newer Paramag brake system. I wouldn't be surprised if this reel outcast that Elite Pro TI. Now this is coming in at $399, but it looks to have a slightly different color scheme. Instead of that bronzish brown, you got uh, purple. And I believe this is replacing that other Pro TI reel they had that costed like $350. But this new reel is now going to be $399. So that's going to be more than the Zillion. And it's going to be sniffing at the Mighty Metanium MGL. So if you're a diehard Luz fan and you want to spend $399 on a Luz, they got a pretty nice reel for you. Okay, they came out with some more budget-friendly offerings, the new Mach 2 SLP, a new American Hero, and they're saying that uh, there's something different about these uh, Pro SPs, but that reel's been out for a while. Okay, so Corrado 200 DC, which I showed you guys a preview video of. And I think the reports are they made the frame wider to give it that 200 line capacity. But I'm not sure. I, I thought that the uh, spool would probably be taller by a millimeter or two. But either way, if you need a Corrado DC with extra line capacity, it is available now. At least. I should say it's available on October 25. Alright, now Zebco released a bunch of spin cast reels. And of course, we're not interested in those. So it's time to go to the spinning reels. And I think this year was more of a spinning reel year than a bait cast reel year at iCast. 13 Fishing came out with a slew of new spinning reels. There's one, two, three, four, five. 
So we're talking $35 all the way up to $180. Now Abu Garcia came out with some new Revo spinning reels. They have a Revo XSP, Revo Winch, Revo SXXP, and a Revo Rocket. Now check out the design on this Rocket. It is very asymmetrical, very distinct. The shape is. There's no way you're not going to mistake this for being an Abu Garcia Revo Rocket spinning reel. Alright, so Cast King came out with the Kestra Elite SFS, which I guess stands for Spinning Finesse System. But this reel is supposed to weigh only 4.6 ounces. Yep, there it is. Now this is not made of magnesium like the bait caster. It's made of uh, some kind of a carbon material. But the thing with these reels are that they have the really shallow spools. So you don't have to put a bunch of backing. Okay, there's some loose spinning reels. A new Patriarch spinning reel from Fluger. That's noteworthy. And this is the only picture. Oh well. Okay, they're saying the Stella is new, which is not, of course. But somehow this won the, I guess, best freshwater reel category but Shimano came out with a whole new spinning reel called the Miravel and it looks like the thing about this reel is that I guess it's supposed to be a budget uh, Vanford because the body instead of being made of graphite it's made of quote unquote CI4 plus which makes it relatively lightweight now, I believe there's a page on it. Here it is, the new Miravel. So on Tackle Warehouse's web page, it looks like it's almost black, but it's actually a deep blue, as you can see here. And I can't blow up these images. There we go. So yeah, it's actually a deep blue, and it's supposed to be an all-around spinning reel for salt and fresh water. But yeah, the price on this reel is going to start out at $130, so pretty budget friendly. Alright, so let's go to the casting rods. Now 13 fishing. I guess since Gerald Swindle signed up with them, they came out with a line of rods designed by him called the Meta. It looks like they'll go perfectly with that uh, reel that they came out with. And here's some news from Daiwa. They have come out with a new line of Tatula XT rods. Now the old Tatula XT rods, which I'm going to show you guys here were always on Tackle Warehouse's bestsellers page pretty much every time I checked and that was because they were only $80 and of course it had the Tatula name and you can see they actually look really good but I think they were really popular due to the Tatula name and the fact that they were $80 so pretty affordable but the new Tatula XT rods they have given it, I guess, some uh, extra features like this carbon tape wrapping that looks like it goes only up to maybe the first guide. I could be wrong, but it's got a real seat that is more proprietary Daiwa and it's got that, uh, I guess, carbon four nut. So it's a handsome rod and it should still sell but 
this rod has a problem and the problem is they bumped the price up $20 to $99.99 now while that still may be a great value you can see it also comes with uh, a lineup of glass rods but the fact they bumped up the price to $99.99 it looks like they're trying to take on the new Shimano SLX rods and for more pictures on the new SLX rods we're gonna go back to Shimano's webpage oh here it is and we're gonna check out this little video But yeah, Shimano already updated their uh, SLX rod lineup. And the SLX rods are also on Tackle Warehouse's bestsellers list pretty much every time I check. So let me know in the comments which rod would you prefer, the SLX or the Tatula XT? But just like the Tatula XTs, they're going to be coming out with a line of glass crankbait rods. So I find it very interesting that Shimano updated the SLX rod lineup the same time that Daiwa updated the Tatula XT lineup and both companies gave their rods I guess the crisscrossing graphite tape which is basically a cheap way to make budget rods look more expensive than they really are. Alright so let's go back up. Okay not interested in that. Eagle Claw came out with a $169 rod. Wow. Here's the Fenwick Elite Bass Rods. Looks like the Guggen Squad came out with, uh, I guess, a extra model for the Gold Series. But I don't see that Black Series rod here. So maybe Tackle Warehouse isn't going to be selling them. Probably have to go to the Catchco website for more info on that, but let's see here. Now they've added uh, several heavy powered rods to the Zodius lineup 710 extra heavy, 7 foot 9 extra heavy. I wonder what the difference is between those two other than an inch. 7 foot 4 extra heavy plus I mean okay I see the difference now so the 7 foot 9 extra heavy goes up to 5 ounces so obviously a swim bait rod while the 7 foot 10 extra heavy is only rated to 2 ounces that's odd while the 7 foot 4 extra heavy plus is rated to 3 ounces hmm so the Zodius lineup is very popular a hot seller for Shimano and they've added some beefy rods to that lineup alright so with the introduction of the Corrado BFS last year it's only natural that companies would be coming out with bait finesse rods and it looks like Cashin has come out with two bait finesse rods a 6 foot 10 medium light and a 7 foot light so let's take a look at these specs 
So the 6 foot 10 medium light is rated as a fast action blue rating 1 8 ounce to 7 16 of an ounce similar to my Adrena BFS rod and then the 7 foot 1 light is also rated as a fast action but it's rated down to 1 16th of an ounce to 5 16 of an ounce so if you take a look at these rods they have that I guess woven handle it says made in the USA but this rod would be a good match for a Corrado BFS because there's really not that many rods in Shimano's lineup that will match up with the Corrado BFS except for maybe the light power Corrado rods but those rods or at least nothing in Shimano's current lineup goes down to 1 60th of an ounce because I think the sense light has been discontinued so if you're needing a rod that uh, is lighter powered than anything Shimano got to offer you may want to check out these Cashin rods but they're not cheap you're looking at $220 for both that looks like Daiwa came out with the Steez AGS 6 foot 8 light which has a low rating of 1 16th to 3 8 of an ounce so definitely well into BFS territory but you're looking at $550 to start out with so I believe that's it for the rods I found interesting or at least from what I see on Talc Warehouse's web page and let's go over some baits real quick now Z-Man has come out with I guess a whole lineup of finesse lures and let me see if I can find them here we go so they have the Z-Man micro finesse TRD which I believe are only two well not even two inches 1.75 inches in length so basically a super finesse Ned rig and you have come out with a shad fries micro this little tiny I guess swim bait they're only 1.75 inches in length looks like some cool panfish colors they came out with the stingers little I guess imitation minnow also 1.75 inches in length and then the tiny ticklers also 1.75 inches in length looks like a variation of the Ned rig but I hope they came out with the I guess hooks or jig heads to match because we are sorely lacking I guess quality finesse light wire jig heads in America you usually have to go over and order from Japan to get a quality finesse jig head but Jackal has brought over their mega lipless crankbait the TN80 now the Jackal TN lipless cranks are probably the best casting lipless crankbaits out on the market because of the tungsten lip right here so they tend to fly or cut through the air pretty good and have less chance of tumbling than other lipless crankbaits but they brought over the one ounce 3.1 inch long TN80s if you are looking for a bigger super long distance casting lipless crankbait and they also came out with a swim jig at least they're bringing it over from Japan where is it at yeah the B crawl swimmer swim jig and here are the colors they're gonna come in a quarter ounce and three-eighths of an ounce and I've never ever fished a swim jig I just thought it looked like a chatterbait without the vibrating blade and it might be but this looks like it could be a variation of Jackal's brake blade chatterbait that they can't bring over here due to the shape of the the blade now it's got these two wires right here 
as weed guards instead of, you know, a big, thick weed guard that has a bunch of bristles like most of the competition. But I think I'm going to order a couple when they come out and see what the swim jig thing is all about. Now Shimano came out with a pretty interesting swim bait and it's the last lure I'm going to cover. It is called, where is it at? Where is that? Okay, here it is. The Shimano Arma Joint Flash Boost Swim Bait. So very, very detailed swim bait as you can see. Very detailed mouth and gill plate. And the cool thing about this swim bait, it's going to have something that no other swim bait has and it's going to be that flash boost feature and I'm going to see if I can show you guys. Well, there's no movie on it, but it's got the flash boost piece of a foil in the center. That's definitely going to draw fish away from a big distance. But the thing about this swim bait is that it's designed to fold almost completely in half, as you see here, which will allow this thing to cast, they claim, 40% farther, I guess, than an average swim bait that can't do the same thing. So basically, this thing should cut through the air like no other swim bait and give you really, really long cast distances. And isn't that what swim baits are all about? It's getting it out there as far as you can and putting that lure in front of as many fish as you can to draw a strike. But yeah, these lures are gonna, they're gonna weigh not even two ounces. It says one and seven eighths of an ounce. It's a slow floating seven and a half inches. So you don't even really need super heavy equipment to throw this, but they're gonna cost about $43 when they come out. I predict they're gonna sell pretty good due to that flash boost. Okay, so I've saved the best for last. The best for last, and we're gonna have to go back to the casting reels. And these are the reels I'm talking about, the arc gravity bait casters you got your gravity 3 your gravity 5 and your gravity 7 now the gravity 3 is really not that big a deal it's gonna have aluminum frame and your standard mag tracks breaking but the gravity 5 and the gravity 7 are the interesting reels and we're gonna go to arcs website to show you why that is Okay, so you can see it's got an asymmetrical design right here. And when I saw pictures of this, especially the side plate, I immediately knew which reel this was based on. And that is the YLT tank, especially when I saw the brakes, which I'm going to go over here in a second with you guys. Asymmetrical. Now it's not exactly the same, but I'm pretty sure it's made by the same factory. But let me show you guys the coolest thing about these gravity reels, at least the Gravity 7 and the Gravity 5. That is going to be this brake system. So this brake system, I guess, is called the Gravity Control System. And this is basically you take Daiwa's MagForce 3D and Shimano's FTB and combine them together. And let me show you how it works. So this is going to be a dynamic system. It's going to have a rotor inductor like Daiwa's MagForce. Hopefully you guys can see that. Well, they're not a really big, but this is it right here, this red thing. Now this doesn't move during the cast like Daiwa's does. I think they did that to avoid patent issues, but apparently you can twist it to control how far it sticks out and you get three settings. So I guess you can stick it really far out to the, I guess the highest setting for the max amount of braking, or you can adjust this rotor to be retracted for long distance casting. So that's the Daiwa part of this brake system. But then the Shimano part is that it looks like you got these bank of magnets that appear to be sp 
spring-loaded, maybe, maybe not, but they act on the rotor. And of course, you can adjust with the external brake dial, I guess, how far in and out they go to interact with the rotor. But if you take a close look at this picture, you'll see that in this illustration, the magnets are really, really close to the rotor, which I suppose that's during the beginning of the cast when the spool is spinning the fastest. And then on this illustration, they've moved away slightly, which I believe is probably towards the tail end of the cast to extend the cast distance. And you can barely tell, but the space right here between this bank of magnets and this, uh, I guess this brake hub is different than here. And there's a slight difference between the distance of the magnets to that rotor in this picture versus this picture. So a very complicated brake system. But the question is, will it translate to, you know, a different casting experience? We'll just have to wait and see. But this gravity control brake system is going to be available on the Gravity 5 and the Gravity 7. And I believe all these reels have aluminum frames. And they come in, you know, a slew of gear ratios from a low 5 to an extra high 8 gear. And... Yeah, they weigh about the same at about 7 ounces, which is not too bad. Yep, even this uh, budget Gravity 3 is about 7 ounces. So yeah, that's definitely something new from ARK. And I applaud them for the effort. Hopefully, somebody will offer to send one of these in. But at these price points, they are looking at some very, very steep competition. You know, $179.99. You're within $10 of the... Corrado K 200, 239. You know, you got your Corrado DC, your Tattoo Elite Long Cast sitting around that same price point. But who knows, maybe this brake system will give us a whole different casting experience. So, if anyone wants to send me the Gravity 5 or Gravity 7 bait caster to test out, just shoot me an email. So, that's it, guys. That's it for this year's iCast coverage. Now I do know that they came out with some new Abu Garcia Revos, but I'm not sure why they're not on Taco Warehouse's webpage. And they're not even on Abu Garcia's webpage, but as soon as information comes out on those, we're going to cover it. So the next thing you should be on the lookout for is the Cask King Kestrel Elite Unboxing. Alright guys, thanks a lot.